Hi. Uh, I think I better start. Uh, it's time. Uh, so my name is Ilya Kostlivyansky. I'm working for Post Rescue Consulting, and that will be probably the one of the last talk about Post Rescue today. The now one is the another room, uh, and this is actually not about the Post Rescue itself, because uh, these recommendations uh, can be easily applied to another database like Oracle DB2 or even MySQL, uh, but uh, more or less. And uh, in this checklist, uh, explained checklist, there will be PostgreSQL specific things, uh, and I try to cover the most important topics of Linux tuning to improve PostgreSQL performance, because it's actually uh, um, quite huge uh, thing, and it's about a full three-hour tutorial. In the talk format, I can cover only uh, several things, uh, but they are actually very important if you are trying to work uh, with Postgres on Linux. Uh, often they, uh, a lot of uh, Oracle DBAs, they say uh, that uh, to administer a Postgres uh, on Linux is not a kind of a gentleman work because uh, you need to be 20% uh, uh, database administrator and 80% uh, the Linux administrator. Uh, they think that, okay, Oracle uh, is well integrated into the operating system and uh, can do everything by itself, and uh, the database administrator uh, can be only a very high flying person uh, which thinks now about how to optimize some query. Yes, in Postgres, that's uh, not so easy, uh, at least yet. Uh, and mm, you need to know something about how Linux works with such specific workload like a database. So, uh, what is all about? Uh, the modern uh, Linux kernel uh, really uh, improved uh, very fast, especially the last two or three years. Probably if you are at this conference, you know this already. Uh, and uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, settings which you can change, uh, and those settings can change the behavior of your database, and sometimes they can change it very drastically. Uh, what I mean is that uh, if you put your database server PostgreSQL on uh, Linux, probably even with uh, not so heavy workload, you will face uh, some performance issues because some default settings or uh, ill-installed, uh, ill-tuned setting, settings uh, can uh, seriously affect your performance. Uh, so that is one thing, and the another thing, if you really have uh, a very uh, heavy workload, for example, uh, uh, quite successful uh, website or any other application, you definitely need uh, to tune Linux uh, to take all benefits from the new versions of uh, Linux kernel. Uh, basically, then, we are talking about uh, tuning something in Linux. Uh, we have such concepts uh, as uh, tuning targets. That's easy. If you have some uh, CPU-intensive tasks, uh, you can do something with uh, Linux scheduler and uh, probably you will win. Uh, or if you have some memory intensive task, you can uh, tune something with uh, memory usage swap or something like that. But the database is a quite uh, complex thing and actually uh, it's quite impossible to change one small uh, thing in Linux and see that, okay, uh, our database perform uh, quite fast after it. Uh, all these uh, targets uh, should be uh, tightly connected and well-balanced. For example, if you have uh, to tune 
your database uh, for uh, better IO performance, uh, you need to match the hardware you have. And uh, if you, for example, have a lot of memory on such uh, installation, uh, you can tune the memory target. But if you have uh, a, a bad disk underneath, uh, that uh, probably uh, cannot, cannot help in any way uh, because the bottleneck moves to the disk. So uh, with the database, the better idea is to use uh, some something like throughput approach. Uh, for PostgreSQL, uh, like any other database, uh, the additional problem to uh, well balancing all these targets is that as any database is actually very hungry for resources, uh, one can try to run a database with a web server or some uh, another application, Java application, for example, on one machine, and uh, actually uh, it uh, brings uh, a lot of uh, concurrency. Uh, and usually you wish to use a separate server for a database system. Uh, and uh, like I said previously, uh, we need to uh, think about so-called uh, throughput approach. Uh, what is all about? Uh, your PostgreSQL uh, processes uh, are working with user transactions, uh, and the most intensive uh, load on your server is actually the buffer cache. So then uh, your database reads some data from the disk. Uh, it puts the same block. Uh, normally, it's uh, 8K size uh, if you do not recompile your PostgreSQL for some specific need. Uh, and Postgres uses um, operating system kernel buffer cache, and it maintains uh, its all own buffer cache. So actually, your uh, pages, which you read from this, uh, are in kernel buffer and uh, in the Postgres shared buffers. And on modern uh, installations, it can easily be uh, 46 uh, gigabytes of uh, shared buffers and even more. Uh, such uh, machines uh, today are uh, quite cheap, relatively cheap, I would say, and there are a lot of such installations. And the basic idea be uh, behind the improving PostgreSQL performance is uh, to maximize the speed Postgres can uh, read this page through kernel buffer and shared buffers uh, to deliver it to uh, end user or uh, the throughput, how fast Postgres can actually write it to disk. And uh, of course, the second uh, topic is uh, quite painful uh, and you need to tune all these uh, layers, all these steps uh, and balance them quite well. Uh, to have a good performance. And the second thing is PostgreSQL actually has right ahead log. Uh, I think most of you know what it is. Oracle calls it read log, uh, and uh, that's basically the log of transaction. And uh, PostgreSQL actually need to write it uh, to through operating system. So uh, there are plenty of bottlenecks uh, which can be existed on any level. So we need uh, to uh, look at the tuning targets uh, to improve this uh, page travel time. This is the small part of the problem, actually, but uh, probably the most important one. Uh, so uh, to make this travel uh, more efficient, we need uh, effective memory, effective uh, disk throughput, and uh, of course, everything should be on the proper hardware. Because if you have uh, some uh, laptop-style machine, uh, probably you can do some things quite fast, if you have, for example, SSD. But uh, it can be uh, not so secure like on a proper server. And uh, still, uh, you cannot achieve uh, such performance like if you have a proper RAID controller and uh, proper disk under this RAID controller. So uh, it's impossible to uh, switch some, some magic button in Linux uh, to make uh, Postgres uh, run very fast if uh, hardware doesn't match it. Uh, so uh, what does it mean more effective work with uh, memory? Uh, that's not exact uh, pure memory thing. That's a more complex thing. The first is uh, 
the second is uh, huge pages, and the third is working with uh, swap. Uh, relatively simple, but uh, we actually uh, have a lot of things that can confuse the database administrator uh, and uh, to drive him to the wrong direction. So uh, the NUMA. NUMA uh, usually uh, can be uh, not proper set it up, and it looks like uh, some CPU suddenly is very overloaded, and it looks like this CPU uh, is the only CPU which uh, works with uh, a huge amount of memory, and the performance of Postgres drops drastically. Uh, what is actually going on here? Uh, NUMA is uh, non-uniform uh, memory access. Uh, so uh, I have some schema about this. Uh, for example, we have two CPUs and uh, our mm, processor architecture allows us to have a CPU and its own block of memory, and these uh, super blocks are interconnected. That's the usual uh, approach in the modern processor architecture. Uh, so if uh, NUMA is enabled, that means that operating system, uh, Linux in our case, actually uh, knew what is going on underneath at the hardware physical architecture. And if uh, the CPU allocates some uh, pages on the, its own local memory, and uh, okay, operating system thinks that uh, this CPU needs uh, more memory, uh, it allocates it uh, through interconnect from another piece of memory. And uh, our clever NUMA aware system knows that uh, the access times to uh, this and that memory is not the equal. So the operating system actually can, an application to, uh, can optimize uh, being uh, aware of these uh, non equal access times. Uh, so basically, the NUMA then uh, it works uh, is a good thing, and uh, it's actually designed to improve performance. Uh, but uh, this is the first thing that uh, can be confusing with uh, using with Postgres. Uh, so uh, what can actually happen if uh, we have uh, such application like? A database server which have uh, a huge amount of uh, shared memory. Usually this uh, ends up with um, uh, one uh, memory and CPU node actually works with uh, all these shared buffers. And this is a huge problem. So for Postgres, uh, quite a better idea if you have uh, NUMA support in your uh, processor to uh, disable this uh, NUMA and switch it off. Uh, that's uh, not uh, a very clear terminology here, because uh, this enable, disable, uh, switch off and switch it on actually very often confuse the Linux and uh, database engineer. So uh, what actually you need to do uh, and how it uh, can affect your uh, Postgres performance. Uh, if you, for example, have some uh, software like uh, ES6 VMware or something like that, it can benefit if you uh, leave the settings with NUMA like a default one. I mean the NUMA is uh, disabled. That's okay for it. That means the NUMA works, actually. Uh, if uh, memory interleaving, I'm sorry, uh, is uh, disabled. That disabled uh, memory interleaving in BIOS actually uh, means that uh, your NUMA is uh, up and running and it's working with uh, this approach, then your operating system is aware that you have non-uniform access uh, times to your memory uh, nodes. For Postgres, uh, it's a bad idea because it can run into this situation then all shared buffers are on the one CPU. So for Postgres,
another thing is a uh, huge pages and uh, actually you uh, can uh, diagnose that you have problems with huge pages using uh, something like uh, system tab or perf uh, but you definitely do not need this uh, to uh, see if you have the problems with huge pages because if you have enough large sharded buffers I mean uh, 32 gigabytes or more or something like that you definitely need to use huge pages uh, so uh, what is all about uh, operating system allocates uh, memory in small chunks uh, that's quite effective uh, for small memory allocation for random memory allocation but a database is a thing that needs a huge sharded buffer speed and uh, in that case uh, it's more effectively to allocate it in uh, not so small pieces but in huge chunks uh, mostly because uh, of a uh, way like operating system works uh, the operating system needs to translate virtual memory addresses to the physical memory address and uh, this is this procedure is uh, not uh, free and uh, operating system tries to put the result of this operation in the special uh, cache uh, which calls uh, translation leukocyte buffer or TLB and the TLB is uh, the cache and uh, it has all the problems which cache actually can have uh, that means if your uh, cache is quite huge uh, it will be cache misses and uh, it will be huge you will have a, an overhead uh, in your memory just to maintain with, uh, this structure in memory so um, the approach is uh, quite uh, straightforward you need uh, to use the huge pages uh, which are supported in Linux kernel for uh, quite a long time now and uh, first step you need to enable these huge pages in Linux kernel and then you need to make your Postgres to use that and uh, that can be tricky actually because the application should be aware of uh, if it can use huge pages so uh, how you can do that uh, with Postgres 12 uh, previously uh, before uh, the version uh, 9.3 uh, you can use uh, the huge uh, TLBFS uh, library uh, after you enable the uh, huge pages in Linux kernel uh, and uh, tell Linux uh, how many huge pages you want uh, to use uh, with uh, your database server installation uh, for example if or you uh, use uh, a dedicated um, PostgreSQL server that means the only database runs on it uh, you can uh, think that okay uh, you will need about 25% uh, uh, of total memory for shared buffers and uh, you, you need to be sure that uh, kernel buffer and shared buffers uh, can reside in this memory plus for example 10 or 20 percent and uh, thinking about that you actually uh, choose the exact value for uh, huge pages uh, in 9.3 things improved a bit in terms of some aspects of PostgreSQL performance uh, for example uh, you now, now you do not need to use uh, some system cattle parameters to uh, increase uh, shared memory because uh, since 9.3 uh, PostgreSQL used a map instead of system 5 way of allocation shared memory but effectively this thing uh, mm, leads to the huge pages support in Postgres 9.3 was broken because uh, moving uh, to MMAP uh, actually disables the, possib the possibility to use huge TLBFS library to manage huge pages for the Postgres uh, and there was uh, no such, in uh, such tool to uh, make Postgres using uh, huge pages but uh, in 9.4 and 
actually uh, the things change and the Postgres uh, have uh, the specific parameter uh, in Postgres called con, which you can uh, using the, uh, this parameter you can enable huge pages, disable or uh, set it to try mode. The try mode is the safest one because if Postgres uh, starts and uh, can allocate shared buffers uh, from huge pages, uh, it actually do this. And if not, uh, it allocates uh, shared buffers uh, from normal pages. It's the safest way because if you just force it to on, uh, Postgres can uh, not start because uh, huge pages are not available, for example, or something like that. And this is a good thing if you have um, some installation which uses not only Linux, but for example, FreeBSD. Uh, and on FreeBSD, PostgreSQL cannot work with huge pages in that way. Uh, so off for FreeBSD is quite okay because this mechanism uh, doesn't, uh, is not supported on FreeBSD. Uh, the important thing is also to uh, disable transparent huge pages. Uh, that not uh, must do actually, but most likely uh, you will need to do that. Uh, what is the problem with uh, transparent huge pages? That's a quite clever mechanism. Uh, actually, all you need to uh, know about uh, transparent huge pages in terms of Postgres that's a, a bit more smart mechanism of managing huge pages. So uh, Linux can uh, manage them uh, more smart, that means uh, if uh, it can uh, merge uh, two huge pages into one, if uh, they feel it's not to the top, uh, it do that, and uh, for many applications uh, that can, can be a benefit, and if you have a lot of uh, memory on your server, it uh, also can be a huge um, benefit because uh, the memory allocation will be much more effective. Uh, but uh, with uh, Postgres, uh, there were some uh, problems with uh, drastic decrease of uh, performance uh, then uh, transparent huge pages were enabled. Uh, most likely, you will uh, not benefit from transparent huge pages if uh, you have uh, not terabytes of memory on your machine. But uh, the possibility that uh, your um, performance drops if uh, you have some bug in Linux kernel, which was actually quite common with huge pages plus Postgres in uh, older uh, kernels like 3.4, uh, 3.6. Um, it can be a problem for you. So uh, you can experiment with that and see if on your particular workload, on your particular on your particular installation, uh, you can benefit from a huge pages, but the safest way is just to switch them off and uh, work with uh, normal huge pages. Uh, what's wrong with swaps? Uh, previously, uh, we can recommend to people to switch it off totally on the database server, mostly because, uh, okay, uh, you have a lot of memory on machine, and uh, what's the purpose of swap? Uh, but uh, on the modern kernels, it's not so straightforward because uh, if uh, you have uh, a lot of memory, you still uh, can see that some processes are swapping. And if your database server is in swap, uh, that means uh, it doesn't work properly, and everything will be very, very slow. So, um, what, what is actually the problem? What is actually the symptom? For example, you have uh, 64 gigabytes of memory uh, on your machine. Uh, you can see that only uh, half of uh, it uh, is used, and uh, still the swap is active and something is in swap. Uh, that's not the behavior you expect to see. Uh, so, um, what, what is the better solution for Postgres? Uh, now, if you set uh, VM swappiness to zero, that means
if a uh, home killer comes, uh, it actually can kill the PostgreSQL server if it runs out of memory. Uh, that's a bad thing because uh, from one point, one point of view, you use your uh, memory quite effective. Uh, you never can go to swap and everything is fast, but it's quite unsafe because if you go to uh, swap, uh, Linux actually will kill your PostgreSQL process, and that's bad. Uh, so on the modern kernels, um, there is a slightly better idea to uh, set the, this parameter to uh, something like one or two or some low number. Actually, by default, is uh, I believe it's about six or seven. That uh, that actually uh, regulates uh, how uh, swap can be used uh, and influences the estimate, the scheduler things, uh, the application will consume uh, the memory. So if you have uh, something like one or two uh, in this setting, that means uh, your operating system will use the you know, most of the memory and only then goes to the swap. If you, for example, set to 10, that uh, will be uh, the operating system will use your uh, swap quite uh, faster than uh, you expect. So uh, never switch it to zero, but you do not need a swap so frequently on the database server, so do not set this one to very high numbers. Uh, the second uh, step of w this uh, uh, page traveling uh, challenge is actually the right performance. And for database, it's uh, the essential bottleneck. So most of problems with database performance is actually uh, the uh, checkpoint problems, or the uh, right head lock syncing problems, and overall the right performance. Uh, we call it normally checkpoint spike. What is actually what it actually is? Then uh, PostgreSQL uh, runs on some heavy workload. You can see from time to time the huge uh, I/O utilization on the database uh, device, uh, which means. Here is the last column of IOSTAT uh, I put it in on the graph, and you see that from time to time it's uh, near 100%, this huge spike. And the second thing is uh, the PostgreSQL uh, system view PGSTAT PG Writer. Uh, this uh, view shows uh, how many uh, pages are written uh, by process check pointer, which performs uh, syncing of the pages written to the uh, write ahead log uh, to the block storage. Uh, how it works? Uh, I just can return to this uh, thing with uh, throughput approach. Uh, then uh, some uh, pages turn to be dirty, uh, the blue pages. Uh, that means that if you change something, run an update uh, in SQL, and change one single row which resides inside uh, some red page, uh, it becomes blue one. That means uh, the whole page is marked as uh, dirty one. And that means that uh, the information we need to recover it to previous state or to uh, redo it to the current state, we write to write head log and the pages on disk and these uh, duty pages are inconsistent. So you need information from right head log, uh, the old version of this page, the uh, clean one, uh, to put it together and to uh, get the new version. That's basically how right head log works. Uh, and uh, the synchronizing of this one performs mostly the special dedicated process checkpointer. The checkpointer process uh, starts uh, flushing the pages to the disk. Uh, it actually takes uh, all pages which are dirty in chart buffers uh, and sends them uh, through uh, the kernel buffer uh, to IO system. And uh, at this moment, uh, you have a lot of s things in your system and uh, you have so-called checkpoint spike. Uh, this uh, 
uh, everything will be very, very slow. And these things actually happen periodically because uh, your checkpoint process comes and starts flushing pages to the disk. So uh, if you correlate two graphics, uh, the I.O. utilization and this uh, page start page right uh, system view on Postgres, uh, you can easily uh, see that definitely your problem is not that uh, periodically someone calls backup or some users try to update something uh, in future months. The problem is that you have definitely two correlated events. Uh, you have uh, a lot of buffers written by checkpoint uh, and you have a uh, huge disk utilization. Uh, and at this point you need uh, to uh, change several settings on your hardware, in your Linux and in PostgreSQL to uh, make this not so uh, painful. Uh, what is going on actually if you have default configuration of uh, Linux? By default, for example, in Debian, uh, these settings, uh, dirty ratio and dirty background ratio, are quite crazy. Uh, these settings are percent, and that uh, percent uh, percent from the total amount of memory in on your server, uh, which operating system can see. Uh, that means, for example, you have uh, 128 gigabytes of memory in your machine. Uh, your uh, Flushing from a uh, buffer cache of Linux kernel only starts when you have uh, at least 10% of that figure uh, filled with uh, dirty pages. That means uh, before uh, you reach the uh, 12 uh, gigabytes of uh, dirty pages, nothing will happen. Uh, if you uh, take a look on modern uh, fast rate controllers, uh, 12 gigabyte cache on modern rate controller it's a uh, it's still a fantastic one so 2 gigabytes that that's good that's well enough if you have no cache on your rate controller that's uh, even uh, worse a problem because uh, your um, operating system actually do nothing but from time to time uh, it receives uh, the instruction to put a lot of information to this and at this moment uh, everything actually hangs. Uh, so the first step is to change these uh, settings. Uh, and uh, the good idea is uh, to uh, set it in byte to match uh, your uh, disk subsystem throughput. So uh, you can uh, just uh, change it to uh, the another setting uh, dirty background bytes and them dirty bytes. Uh, these exact figures are for a RAID controller which has uh, half gigabyte of uh, battery backed cache. Uh, you can easily calculate uh, them for your own uh, RAID controller. And if you actually have no RAID controller, uh, these figures uh, should be even smaller because uh, then you have no RAID controller or uh, you have no SSDs with a supercapacitor which uh, can uh, handle its own cache on SSD. Uh, that means that uh, your throughput is quite smaller and these uh, crazy default settings uh, which are common in most uh, Linuxes uh, will decrease your performance drastically. Uh, the another thing you actually need to uh, set up your hardware properly, for example, uh, you cannot benefit from um, cache on your RAID controller if you have no battery. Uh, that's a quite funny thing, but then you uh, order a new RAID controller, uh, usually the uh, battery is uh, the optional uh, thing. So one Endeavor controller, I mean, uh, Mega RAID uh, or the Delphone, they support a bit better back cache, but uh, double check if the battery is installed. Uh, if uh, it is not, uh, the RAID controller by default uh, do not use this cache uh, because it's unsafe. Uh, it tries to protect you from shooting through your leg. Uh, so uh, I have uh, actually a separate talk about setting up the hardware parts 
I/O issues they are quite uh, important and uh, actually a lot of troubles uh, go through these uh, I/O related issues. But uh, in modern Linux kernel, there are a lot of nice features which can be, for example, very good for a desktop or laptop, uh, but uh, it can be very bad for uh, your uh, database server. One of such things is uh, scheduler settings which you can change through the system cartel. Uh, this relatively new features and they actually can really improve your Linux desktop performance. But on a uh, database server, it can be very painful. Uh, the first one uh, is uh, actually some uh, limit in nanoseconds. Uh, during this uh, period of time, the scheduler thinks that the process is uh, hot enough. And that means that the scheduler will not attempt to migrate it to another CPU. Obviously, if uh, this process is a database server proce process, uh, such migration to another CPU is a very uh, expensive operation and it will certainly uh, affect your performance. So your intention is to set this uh, first option to the reasonably high uh, figure uh, to not allow uh, the scheduler to migrate your Postgres processor to the uh, another CPU. Uh, and the second one uh, is mm, the auto group enabled. Uh, that means uh, that all processes which are running from the same virtual terminal uh, will be, uh, the scheduler will try to group them on the single CPU. Uh, just imagine the Postgres QL, uh, which is a traditional. Uh, Prefork based uh, application and use uh, normal heavy Linux thread uh, to do its job. Uh, one and every process of Postgres are on the single uh, CPU. Uh, this is definitely not the thing you would like uh, to see. So, uh, this uh, thing is probably good for some, um, I don't know, some desktop environments and you're trying to use GIMP to process your photos. But for database server, it's a stupid idea, and you need to disable that. Uh, there is a good explanation in uh, PostgreSQL Hacker List uh, with a good example than uh, the problem of uh, some PostgreSQL installation was uh, quite well solved by changing those parameters. Uh, and actually, you need a relatively new kernel uh, to uh, work with this because uh, there were several bugs in uh, Linux kernels. Uh, I don't know exa exactly the version um, because these parameters are quite new and uh, bugs are imminent. This is an example of just very stupid, very light test using uh, Postgres default PG bench benchmark, uh, which my colleague uh, performed. And you can see that changing these parameters uh, just slightly uh, improves the performance. And if you have more complex database workload, it will be even more drastic. So uh, try to figure out how these settings are configured on your exact installation, and uh, probably you can benefit uh, about this. Uh, another stupid thing uh, which actually is not stupid uh, for laptop, for example, or for smartphone, but quite stupid for database server is a uh, power saving policy. Actually, um, by default, they usually are quite reasonable, but I have seen uh, more than once uh, the uh, hosting providers they uh, change these for uh, dedicated servers. And if you do not change that, then you get the server and put your database on it. Uh, you will have uh, a very uh, unexpected result. So uh, the most uh, appropriate
appropriate for database workload is uh, a CPU a CPU frequent with a performance uh, governor. Uh, the reason is that a CPI a CPU frequent is uh, a bit modern driver and it uh, works with a power saving policy better. Uh, and uh, the performance is the only option uh, you can use with a database server. If you try to be power safe, that actually means that the operating system uh, will try to reschedule your PostgreSQL uh, processes and uh, that will be not just uh, lowering them all uh, down a bit and uh, have a constant uh, difference with uh, maximum performance setting. Uh, that uh, mean that you have unpredictable renighting of these processes. So uh, your database performance uh, can be uh, actually very unpredictable. For example, then you try to optimize uh, SQL query. You run it once and uh, have the result like uh, x second then you run the same uh, query a uh, second time and uh, quite different results. So uh, you definitely need to uh, make sure that you have no such things like uh, on-demand power save, user space, uh, or something like that, or conservative. Uh, just check it if uh, you have uh, the server which was not set up by uh, your own operation engine. So uh, I really thank you to my colleagues who uh, every day perform new research about this. Uh, we, we meet new tasks uh, in field operations. And if you have some questions, I will be happy to answer about that. <laughs> Okay. 
nice because actually okay from time to time we have problems with one cpu is overloaded uh, that's quite common thing uh, or someone uh, disables uh, swap totally and tom killer came and killed postgres that happens actually uh, more frequently than one can expect so uh, this uh, set of settings actually uh, not my own list, but a uh, list which is created by the emergency cases. You're welcome. Yeah, sure. They will be on the wiki page. Uh, Postgres call wiki uh, with. Uh, conference slide scale, I believe you can google this Postgres scale wiki scale 14 and they will be I actually don't know but I hope there will be some link on the schedule of that but yes uh, actually uh, th th this talk is slightly improved uh, in one of the slides, but uh, these slides are uh, quite easy to find on SlideShare by the uh, Linux Union for PostgreSQL performance. Actually, based on feedback, I improved some things because uh, people were confusing uh, about this enable, disable, and so on. Uh, not actually the straightforward. More questions? Uh, there are some actually, but um, on Amazon, you actually has, have no such plenty of space to tune something. <laughs> uh, but if uh, you can actually, uh, you probably uh, need, for example, to uh, change uh, these uh, Linux settings like uh, power safe and policy, scheduler, or even dirty. Uh, but uh, on Amazon, uh, actually, there are some tricks uh, how to manipulate uh, Amazon throughput uh, to mm, to get the best uh, money to uh, performance uh, figures. This is actually not about uh, the Linux tuning, it's also about Amazon. Uh, I think the answer is uh, quite, uh, uh, quite common. Uh, I mean that for uh, all cloud applications and for databases especially, there is a, a rule of thumb about that. Uh, that means if you uh, want to have some flexibility, uh, that means you do not know how much uh, database resources you will need in two months while your startup is growing up, uh, you definitely need, uh, you, you definitely can choose uh, Amazon RDS or Heroku or something like that. Uh, and you will benefit uh, through this flexibility. But if you have a really heavy workload uh, and you can choose between bare metal and uh, virtual cloud appliances, uh, the second one will be definitely more expensive than uh, bare hardware and probably uh, some kind of support or in-house or uh, some remote support or something like that. So if you need uh, the max to maximize your throughput, most likely uh, Amazon will be uh, more expensive than bare metal. Um, uh, personally, I uh, have run into the problem that, okay, uh, throughput uh, in terms of Amazon, this means uh, transactions per second. Uh, but this is uh, not the good metric for the database, uh, because uh, on the virtual appliances, you often can have uh, some not uh, quite uh, smooth um, latency, and even if uh, some transaction uh, with uh, 
throughput quite nice. Uh, if even one transaction will wait for some non-trivial time, for example, one second or two seconds, it can actually kill uh, the database performance if it will be, for example, uh, flushing the uh, dirty pages to the disk, or if your uh, optimizer will uh, plan uh, an access method in this time. So for database, quite important 